learn how you can add objects circling the user's head. Okay, so I have a little sample project set up here. So I have a few different chess pieces, uh, most of them hidden for now. And all I've done is I've added the head binding, which brought along a face occluder, uh, which I've hidden for now. And then I've just brought in my chess pieces, parented them to the head binding, and I used a tween script to give it uh, this little spin. So I attached the tween to the object prefab, and then if you open that up, here's the actual object. And then I just gave it a little rotation to give it that little uh, tilt and wobble. So now that I have this uh, spinning around, I also want it moving around the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty object under this head binding to act as the center of rotation. So up here in the objects panel, I'm going to click on the plus button. And at the very top, I want to add a scene object. I'm going to rename this to center and I'm going to add it to my head binding. All right, so let's make sure that's still selected and I want to move it more up by the forehead and kind of center of the head. And this is where I want my rotation to originate from. All right, so now that that is positioned, I'm going to take my chess piece here. I'm going to parent it to this um, center um, object. And now I'm going to lift that up a little bit. Actually, uh, we can set all these positions to zero. So I'll stick it exactly on our empty object. And now I'm just going to drag this out to where I want it to kind of rotate from. Um, maybe not rotate from, but out to where it's radius where I want that to be. And on the center, I'm going to add a tween script to add some rotation to it, because now that our 3D model is offset from the center, if I start to rotate this, I'm gonna get my chest piece moving in a circle. All right, so since I have these rotating, I've already imported the tween manager. If you haven't done that, click on this plus, come down to helper scripts, select tween manager, now when that imports, there'll be some examples nested under this. Go ahead and delete those and then drag the tween manager all the way up to the top of the scene. And once that's all good to go, you'll select your center of rotation, add component, select script, and then we're going to open up the tween folder, tween types, and we want tween transform. Now we don't want to move it we want it to rotate, so let's change that type. Now, movement type, uh, we might want to try this from two. Uh, so maybe we could go, just to take a quick look, from zero to 90, we can see it rotates around. And this is the y-axis. The reason I know I want that is because here on this little rotation control, this green um, circle here is the y. X is red, Z is blue. Um, and so over here we have X, Y, and Z are starting and are ending points. So let's try 360 and doesn't go anywhere. Let's try maybe 180 and it kind of loops around. And we can kind of play with these numbers, but we aren't getting it to go all the way around. So instead of using from two, we're going to use offset. So what offset does is we can add in a little step let's say 10 degrees, and it was subtle, but it moved a little bit. So let's bump that up just to 50 so we can see it a little more drastic. So when the tween ran, it went from its starting position and rotated 50 degrees. So that's good, um, but we want it to keep going around. So what we're going to do is on additive, we're going to select that. So that means each time the tween runs, it's going to take its position at 50 degrees, and then it's gonna start from that rotated point at 50 more degrees and keep going around. Uh, but it's only run once, so what we need to do is loop it. And now you can see that it is going around in a circle, but it is kind of going in distinct steps. So what we need to do is change this easing function. 
So this defines the type of motion. So if we want it nice and smooth, we'll choose linear. We'll choose in and out. And now our chest piece is going in a nice, smooth, continuous circle. And we can change this offset to slow it down if we have a smaller offset. Or we can also change this time. This is how long it takes for this offset to happen. So we can have a large offset or we can have a small time. So you, you can see that by decreasing the time for our motion, we speed up the rotation. Now, if I turn on the face occluder, you can see as it passes behind the user's head, it is hidden and then it comes back around. Now I did increase the scale of my occluder a little bit. Um, I took it up to 1.0585, it's just an arbitrary size. The reason I did that is because by default, it's a little smaller than the head. And when you're getting around to the edges of the head, um, you can see that we pass in front of some of the hair before the occluder kicks in. Um, it's just kind of a balancing act. Uh, someone who's bald, the occluder is going to much more closely match their hair. If someone has a big puffy hair or a crazy hairdo, then your object is definitely going to pass in front of the hair before it's occluded. It's just something to keep in mind and just a limitation of how this works. Now, the cool thing about this, now that I have my first piece moving, is I can add an arbitrary number of pieces and they will all rotate along with it. So I'm going to reactivate all my chess pieces and let's move them all under my object. Now all I have to do is just position them where I want. So I'm going to start by moving everything up to the center of the uh, empty object. So if you double click or triple click, you can select everything, hit zero, and then if you hit tab, you'll move to the next box and they'll highlight everything for you. So that's a nice quick little trick. All right, so I have everything centered. Now you can't really see them because the face occluder is hiding them. So I'm going to switch to the top view so I can adjust it manually. Or if you click and drag this box, you can rotate around. And if you just um, is it double click, it'll move you to the top view. All right, so I moved my bishop piece out here. Let's not scale it. Let's make sure we're on drag. Now let's move it out a little bit. Let's select the king. I'll just move him back here. And now you can see that I have the two pieces rotating around the head. So now all I have to do is just finish positioning these pieces however I want. Now to move them, you can grab the arrows to move in a certain direction. Or if you select this square, it'll move in every direction except for the color of the square. So if we look at this, our Y is up and down. I don't want to move my pieces up and down. But if I select the square, it will stay. It won't adjust the Y position. Bill, let me move it in the X and Z. So I'm going to click that. So I guess you don't need a double click. I just did a single click there. Let's just finish moving these pieces out. Now this doesn't need to be exact. I'm just going to roughly get them kind of out in the same position. And now you can see the pieces are moving around the head. I think that's a little fast in motion. So let's just take that down a little bit. You know, maybe we want to move these all in just a hair. So all you have to do is just adjust these positions because the rotation is handled by the parent object. So as long as they are nested under that, the rotation is going to happen. And so now we have a very easy, very simple uh, way to rotate objects around the user's head. All we had to do was create our scene object, add a tween, make sure we looped it, rotate, offset, additive, now we just adjust the speed, change the easing function, um, and then parent our 3D objects to that, and we're good to go.